Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamers. Say, did you know that protons have mass? I didn't even know they were Catholic. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at 1565 St. Elmo's Pay from Hall or Nothing Games. We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. In 1565, St. Elmo's Pay from Hall or Nothing Games, two players take on the roles of either the Turks or the Christians as they are battling in Malta in 1565. This is a card battle game system. Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to select three locations that you're going to put in between you, three cards that are set in between the players. Then each player over the course of the game is going to have kind of an imaginary three by three grid, nine cards that they can potentially lay out. Now, each side will start with their leader card out in the middle of that first row there. And over the course of the game, you're going to be adding more cards to your side and attacking uh, the enemy and also going through trying to accomplish missions and trying to take down those locations. Now most cards are going to have a lot of different information. They are going to have a cost associated with that card, essentially the cost you have to, play, uh, to pay to play that card. You're also going to have things like zeal, strength, as well as health, and various abilities that that card will be able to do. Now also the cards can represent different things like characters or even some cards or events that don't go into the play area, but they can again affect the battlefield in various ways. Now, the first thing you're going to do is the planning phase. Now, you're going to do a victory check. Obviously, at the beginning of the game, you're not going to do that. But you're going to discard your hand down to six cards. And then you will be able to draw two cards into your hand. Finally, you will be able to ready any cards. Many cards have been uh, tapped or you know moved sideways, whatever we're calling it now. Uh, they're moved uh, to the side. You're going to ready all your cards and prepare them for battle. Next, we have the deployment phase. Essentially, players are going back and forth taking actions. The first thing you can do is play a card from your hand. Now, every card has a cost associated with it to play it. Now, some of the cards that you actually have down on your uh, kind of your tableau there can generate resources. You automatically have resources that you can pay for the next card. But otherwise, you're going to be uh, essentially discarding cards, uh, getting rid of those cards. They're out of the game uh, for all intents and purposes in order to play that next card. On, so, so if the card has three resources, uh, a, or three resource cost, and you've got a card that generates two resources, you still have to discard one of your cards in order to play that new card. Now, some cards that you played have actions. You can go ahead and you can do what you have to do somehow, sometimes, you know, play, pay a cost or whatever. You take that action, you can tap the card, and then whatever that action tells you to do, you can do that on the board. Now, you can also choose to sacrifice a card. If you've got a card in your tableau you don't want there for whatever reason, you can go ahead and just remove that from play. Now, during the deployment phase, when you're taking these actions, you are also you also have objective cards. And these are objective cards unique to your side. Essentially, you're trying to add up the zeal or the might from the cards you have in order to defeat the specific objectives. You're playing through these things, A, B, C, D. You're playing the, through these things until you can get to the Great Malta card. The Great Malta cards essentially allows you to open up the frontiers for you to attack. These are the middle cards in the middle, uh, the location cards. So you're going to go ahead. You're going to try to take down those cards and hopefully get to that Great Malta card before your enemy does. Now, third, you have the frontier phase. Now, again, if you have the Great Malta card, you can begin to attack the frontiers. 
essentially, again, you're adding up your might uh, or your zeal, you're, you're attacking, and you get an advantage if you have your great multi card, but if your enemy does not. Now, as you are attacking the frontiers, you're placing damage uh, markers in your color on it, and you're trying to hit kind of their, 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 their health level of these frontiers. Now, next, you have the objective phase. This is where you're actually interacting with the objectives off of the side in order to get to the great multi card. Now, as I say, each player can use their zeal or their might, depending on what the card asks for, to try to break that. Again, you're assigning damage to it. You're trying to break through these cards before you can really attack the frontiers. Once you play through all the objectives and you've revealed that great multi card, you no longer have to worry about that part of the game. You're just concentrating on taking out the frontiers in the frontier phase. So players are going back and forth. They're drawing cards. They're playing cards. They're playing events. They're playing actions. They are trying to, uh, of course, get to the... Uh, end of the Great Malta phase, they once they get to the grand, uh, end of the, uh, the, the Great Malta card, they can go ahead, they can start attacking the Frontiers, and the first player to take down two of the Frontiers with damage in their color win! 1565, St. Elmo's Pay. Alright, so there's a, there's a lot more going on here. There's a lot more of these card abilities that come out that you can play. There's a lot more things that trigger with the um, objective cards when they're defeated and whatnot. There are persistent abilities that can come out and give you stuff. There are uh, responsibilities. You can play cards that respond to, uh, to other cards. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, a lot of meat. Now, Ray and I sat down. This is a game I've, I've had on my shelf for a while. I've been trying to get to it, trying to get to it, and I hadn't had a chance to get to it until just recently. And Ray and I sat down, we played it, and um, initially I was kind of confused. It didn't quite click. Ray and I were kind of scratching our heads at a few things. But within a few turns, it started to make sense. And one of the biggest things is I was under the impression as you played this game, you're just going to be building this massive tableau of cards. But the reality is you've got, they're expensive, right? And you're going to have card hands. We're like, oh, I want to play that ability. I got to play that ability. But the cards themselves are kind of a currency. They're your resources to play other cards. So you have to make some really tough choices about which cards you're going to you know, discard, essentially get rid of. Uh, in order to play and to activate some of these other cards. It's really fun and frustrating uh, trying to make those kinds of decisions in this game. It's also a game that is very, you know, for lack of a better word, thinky. It's a puzzle. You know, you're trying to figure out, uh, because the, the cards, uh, you've got the three different rows, and essentially they can only attack the cards directly in front of them, um, and so you're trying to figure out, okay, where do I want to place these guys in such a way that they're going to protect, be protected and do the most damage to the enemy. And it's hard when you're trying to do these kind of big picture things here too with your cards. And so it's a really fun juggling act. It's a real fun, like I say, puzzle that you're trying to, 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 to figure out which cards you want where. I'll be blunt, like this game a lot more than I thought I was going to. Now, I had originally approached the publisher uh, because they, they have uh, this system, but I believe it's Waterloo, the Battle of Waterloo. And I'm a Waterloo junkie. I, I love the Battle of Waterloo. I've read a ton of the Battle of Waterloo. In graduate school, Napoleonic Wars were my um, were one of my subfields. And, uh, you know, I, I read a lot and wrote a big paper on Waterloo. And I just it's, a, it's just a very cool battle to learn about. Glad I didn't fight in it. But anyway, I approached them about the Battle of Waterloo. They said, well, we don't have any of that in, but we got this other game with the same system. I'm like, yeah, okay. And I wasn't excited about the th as, ex as excited about the theme. But, um, and again, it sat on my shelf for a while. If it had been Waterloo, I don't know. Maybe I would have gotten to it sooner. In any event, I'm really sorry I waited, because this is a great game. This is really a fun game I really enjoyed quite a bit. The hallmark of any good game is tough choices, and this game is filled with tough choices. There is a Solitaire version. I have not played the Solitaire version. I've just played the two-player game, but I really, really enjoyed it quite a bit. Recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for $15.65. St. Elmo's Pay is buy it. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today on the Discriminating Gamer. As always, I ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on the discriminatinggamer.com. I'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about uh, military history, books on history, fun things like that. I'd ask you to please check that out, and please subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. I'd also ask you to please give a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek. And if you really do enjoy the content we bring to you, ladies and gentlemen, I'd ask you to please click on the Super Thanks button and leave a tip. You know, I recently lost my TV controller. It's probably in some remote location. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. 
<laughs> My nephew told me that one, and I, I, I thought that was stupid at first, but then I got it. 